Welcome to the second video in a series on peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and copyright infringement. My name is Darren Delaney, I'm Head of Technical Services here at Netflix Technologies. In this short video, we're going to take a look at how you can use your LangGuardian today to, to detect peer-to-peer -to -peer activity and also to gain some level of visibility into what people are downloading via peer-to-peer -peer applications on your network. We're now logged on to the LangGuardian web GUI. First thing I want to do here is I want to show you how you can set up this peer-to-peer -peer dashboard. And I'm also going to modify this, going to add on a, a graph in a second showing uh, BitTorrent activity on this network. Just to show you how you created some of the elements. So it doesn't matter if you've got 20 clients or 20,000 clients, you can follow the same methodology for setting up your peer-to-peer -peer dashboard. And the very first thing you want to do is just like with BitTorrent or peer-to-peer, is that you would go start off here with the turn file download because that is the first thing that users will do to, to start the whole uh, media file download. So to set that up, we go to bandwidth usage, go to top websites by a URI, and we put in a, a search string here of dot torrent. And if you just put a dollar sign there, that means that any web requests which end with a dot torrent. So we do run that first. And sure enough, we find out here two uh, torrent files have been downloaded into this network. You didn't click and remember filters, and you might want to call this torrent file downloads. Now, I've already set this up, so I'm, I'm not going to save it right now. But you just give it a name there and hit the save option. So that's the first report you want to do. And it's actually one of the most powerful reports because you do get, get a certain level of visibility into what people are downloading via, via BitTorrent. Second report you might want to take a look at if you go to bandwidth usage again, go to top clients. In the client field here, just put in your local subnet range. And you can come separate if you've got multiple subnets. And in the server range here, we put in the same subnet range. Okay, again, you can come separate if you have multiple subnets in use in your network. But in the servers uh, field, you start with an exclamation mark. And that means not. Show me any clients on my local network connected to machines which are outside of my local network. So we run that report here. And we find machines here making lots of external connections. We drill down on this particular one. We find this machine here is connected to lots of external systems and high port numbers. And if you remember back to the first video, when peers connect to peers, they negotiate ports and are usually high port numbers. So this is always a good indication here. You've got some sort of bit turn going on in the, on the network. Okay. So let's set up this peer-to-peer -peer dashboard. If you don't have a peer-to-peer -peer dashboard, just click the Add option on your LangGuardian, and then just uh, type in peer-to-peer. -peer. I'm going to edit my one here. So you'll just fill in peer-to-peer -peer first. I'm going to add the trend here. So by default, um, you will have a peer-to-peer -peer trend set up in your LangGuardian. So I'm going, to, I'm going to drop that here onto my dashboard. I go click on Reports. If you set up your turn file search report, it will be listed here at the top and then you drop it across. I've already done that here and I've double clicked on it here and I've, I've selected the option for the last four hours. You will also find further down here um, under the policy reports here, you've got the little, um, little kind of little icon here, brown icon. You might want to drop across that as well. So that's going to look at any clients in there um, using BitTorrent applications. And finally, go back up to top here. This report here is looking at clients in the network making connections to external machines. And this is the report we took a look, look at earlier on where the client IP address field is your local subnets and the uh, servers field is, is, is not your local subnets. So exclamation mark local subnets. And again, I've double clicked and uh, selected the last four hours. So you save that. And what you'll get then is a, is a really handy uh, peer-to-peer -peer or BitTorrent monitoring dashboard. Here we can see here that the BitTorrent, um, we didn't have any activity, but it kicked off in the morning and then just disappeared again. Here we have the torrent file loads downloaded over the last four hours, and this, this is exactly what I did here. I downloaded two uh, Ubuntu operating system uh, ISOs. Here's listing the PCs um, responsible for the activity. So I've got uh, two machines. This list of now one machine here twice because I use two different BitTorrent applications. And also here the top clients in the network. Now, 
I suppose we can ignore the last ones here that, that's only tiny amount of data. Uh, this unit here, which is on my network, is it's doing some um, multicast, uh, or sending out some, um, I think, believe it's multicast tra traffic. So it looks like it's an external address, but that's just a reserved address used for multicast. So it's a tiny amount of data that we can ignore, but obviously this is the one to watch here, 700 megabytes. In my test, I downloaded a 700 megabyte file in about uh, 15 minutes. So it was coming in at just over four megabits per second. So it just takes two of those machines in your network to fully max out a, a um, 10 megabit link. So it is, it, they do, do use a lot of bandwidth. So that's it. That's your peer-to-peer, -peer, very simple peer-to-peer -peer dashboard setup. In the next video, I'm going to show you some of the new things we're working on within network technologies, and it's around even decoding the, the BitTorrent um, protocol even more and even more visibility to what's happening on the network.